So to study Cauchy's stress theorem, first we need to know what a traction vector is. So traction vector is nothing but a limiting value of the ratio of force acting over an area. Suppose del F force is acting on the area del S as shown in the figure. So by definition of traction, it is del F by del S. But when we limit that area to zero, that is when the area tends to zero, that is it's approaching a point, then this traction can be termed as a traction vector. Here n denotes the normal to the surface element. So since the traction vector is acting at a particular point, for a particular area passing through the point, we can say an infinite number of surfaces will pass through that point. Therefore, resulting in infinite number of traction vectors. With the help of Cauchy's stress theorem, if we know the stress vectors of on any three mutually perpendicular planes at a point, we can also calculate the stress vectors on any other plane passing through that same point with the help of coordinate transformation equations. So Cauchy's law or Cauchy's stress theorem states that there exists a Cauchy stress tensor sigma which is a second order tensor which maps the surface normal n to the traction vector acting on the surface. So traction is having linear dependency on the normal vector n and as we can see Cauchy stress tensor is independent of the normal vector. And the components of traction T1, T2, T3 can be expressed as follows. So to find the normal stress, we just have to do the dot product of n vector with the traction. And the shear stress can be found out from the formula as shown. So let's practice whatever we learned. In this question, we are given the state of stress acting at a point in the matrix form that is sigma ij and it's also mentioned here that the traction vector is acting on a plane which is equally inclined to all the three mutually perpendicular axes so from this sentence we can find out uh, the n1 n2 n3 that is uh, the normal and by multiplying sigma ij and the normal vector we can find the traction vector and from there, we can easily find the normal and the shear stresses acting on that particular plane.